Hey guys, today I want to show you how to create a 3D avatar and use stable diffusion automatic 1111 to turn it into a hyper realistic video animation. We will also need Mixamo and Blender, but everything will be explained in detail in this video. Ok, now let's jump right into it. There is a free website called Ready Player Me, where you can create your avatar. Just create a free account and log in, and after a few seconds you will see the starting page. I've already created a few avatars before, but I'm going to guide you through the process of creating a new one. Just click on Create New Avatar, then again create a new avatar, choose the body type, and then you can take a photo of yourself or pick a file or just continue without it. So let's quickly take a photo with our webcam. Hit accept and after a few seconds your new avatar will be ready. Well, looks surely better and younger than I am, but overall it's quite ok, so let's use it. You can change any aspects of the avatar, but I just will give him some different clothing. Ok, that looks good to me. Now press on enter hub and wait a few seconds until your avatar has been created. Still, I think I'm going with the girl, because it will be a dancing animation and it looks much nicer. Just click on the three dots and download Avatar GLB. This is a 3D format, which can be used in many different kinds of 3D software. And we are going to use Blender, which is free, to work with the model. Now let's rename the model to make things easier. And then switch over to Blender and start a new project. Let me quickly turn on the screencast keys, so you can see when I'm typing on my keyboard. Now left click on the cube and hit X to delete it. And then let's import the GLB file with our avatar. Now hit file, import, GLB, GLDF. Go to your downloads folder and import the GLB file. So here we are, let's switch to rendered mode and as you can see the model has all its colors and materials and in the next step we need to export this file as an FBX, then load this FBX file into Mixamo and create our dancing animation. As a bath mode choose copy and click on the little box right to it. And let's just save the file into our downloads folder. Also let's save the Blender file and keep it open, because we will need it again later. And then let's open the Mixamo website, link down below. Create a new account if you haven't got one, and then log in. Now next let's upload the FBX file, which we just exported from Blender. Clicking on Upload Character, then select Character File, Female FBX and Open. When the file has been loaded, you will see a quick preview. Then click on Next and your avatar will be available in Mixamo for animation. For some reason the textures and colors are missing, but we will fix that later in Blender. Now let's search for a dancing animation. I think we go with the Hip Hop. Then let's hit the download button, export as FBX with skin and let's choose 24 frames per second because that's a little less rendering time. Then hit download. Now back to Blender, hit file, import, FBX and go to the download folder and import the hip hop dancing file. Let's hide our old avatar by shift clicking the I icon and then let's fix the missing materials. First let's rename the animation to female, then click on the little triangle left to the name, so you can see the meshes. Now click on the first mesh and then select the materials menu down below. You can see it's Wolf 3D I001. Let's change that to Wolf 3D I. That's the material of our original avatar and let's repeat this process for each single mesh. Now shift click on the eye next to the 
original avatar, right click on it and then select delete hierarchy which will delete our old avatar because we don't need it anymore. Let's drag up the window with the timeline in the lower part and select your new avatar and you will see the animation down below. You can see that the animation is about 522 frames long so let's uh, write 522 into the end of our rendering. Let's save the file again and hit play to play the animation. Now we are done with this part but we still need some background to guide our stable diffusion render later on. And the easiest way is just downloading a free 3D model and I would recommend to get this model at a site called Sketchfab where they have tons of 3D models free for download. I will leave a link down below. You may need to create a free account before downloading stuff. Then let's search for maybe a city scene. Click on downloadable and choose any free licenses. So just uncheck standard and editorial. I think there's a nice city scene. Click on it. A small French village with a little cafe. Okay, let's download that one. So download 3D model and choose GLTF uh, as the downloaded format. Once it's downloaded, go to the download folder and double click on the zip file, which will unpack it. Then let's go back to Blender and import this scene. So file, import, glb, gltf, open the city scene and click on the scene gltf file. You can see it's way too small, so we have to scale it up. Hit S on your keyboard and move the mouse upwards until it has the right size. Use the buttons on the left side for moving, resizing, rotating. I'm just going to speed up the process a bit until I have the right perspective. Okay, I think that's good now. You can see that we have two cameras in our scene. So let's delete the second one. Then let's split the main screen by moving the mouse between the screens until you see a plus sign and then drag it to the left side. The reason why we do that is because I want to do some camera movements before rendering our scene and in one window we will have our main view and in the second window we will go to the camera view by clicking on the camera icon. Like that. So now let's drag the camera to our initial position Click on the little camera icon right on the screen so you can see the camera settings. Let's zoom out from the main view a bit until you can see the camera. Here it is. And then drag and rotate the camera until you have the position you want. You can see the camera view in the left window. Then click on the little arrow on the right side of the main window and you can see the items tab. Now we move over the location and hit the I key on your keyboard and also the same at rotation. This will add a keyframe for location and rotation at the current frame of our animation. You can see a little yellow diamond in the timeline down below. Now let's drag the position marker in the timeline to frame 100. Then move the camera to a new position and insert a new keyframe at location and rotation by hitting the I key on your keyboard. You can repeat this process at other locations in the timeline until you're happy with your camera movements. Okay, last thing to do in Blender is rendering the scene. Select that little printer icon on the right side, scroll down and choose an output folder. Let's just call it Blender Render in our case. And this will be the folder where our animation will be saved. Now click on the little camera icon, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, save the file just to be sure, and then go to Render, Render Animation. 
This will take a little while and I'll be back when the render is finished. Ok, it's done. Now let's go to our Blender render folder and you will see that there is an image sequence created by Blender which we will use as an input to Stable Diffusion. So let's open our Stable Diffusion web UI for Automatic 11.11. You might notice that I'm not using the standard stable diffusion model, but the uber realistic pawn merge model. Now don't worry, we are not creating any pornographic content, of course. It just produces highly realistic outputs. So let's go to Civit AI and find the model. Search for uber realistic. Click on the checkpoint and not the LoRa file. Then download the model which will take some time because it's nearly 4 gigs large. And once you've downloaded it, move it into your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder under Models, Stable Diffusion. Now back to our Web UI, hit the Refresh button to refresh the models and select the model we just downloaded. Now let's go to Image to Image and upload the first image from our Blender render. Then let's write a quick prompt. Let's activate the control net extension and insert the same image as a guidance. Let's use depth as a preprocessor and the same for the model. And then let's make a quick test render. It's quite okay, but not really what we want. So we need to play around with all the settings, especially with the CFG scale and the denoising strength, but also with the prompts and the sampling steps. Just make a few test renders, also with different seeds, until you get what you want. Now that's much much better. As I said, the uber realistic Born merge is really a good model for realistic renders. For rendering our animation we will use the Deforum extension. So let's transfer the settings from the image to image tab to Deforum. We do need more steps than an image to image because the forum is reducing the steps after the second image. Let's copy the seed and other stuff from image to image and rename the batch to clip, which will be our output directory. Restore faces. At the keyframe step, choose video input. Let's set the strength to a very low value, like maybe 0.2. Also the CFG scale should be low, so set it to maybe 5.5. Let's crank up the noise to 0.02. Then let's go to the prompt step and copy the values from image to image. We only need one animation prompt at frame 0 because we want to keep the video rendering consistent. Now let's copy our negative prompts. And then let's go to the init tab and click on video init. Now the forum needs a video as an input and not an image sequence. So we have to create this video first. I'm on my Mac, so I'm using QuickTime. But when you're in Windows, you can just do it in your video editing software like DaVinci Resolve. Once your video is created, just paste the path to the video into the video init path. Here we go. I also want to change the value in extract nth frame to 2, which means that only every second frame will be rendered. More about that later. Now let's go to control net and enable it. Leave the settings as they are. Just use depth as a preprocessor and depth as a model. Paste the path to your input video into the control net input video path. Ok, last thing to do is click on the Generate button. And an image sequence with half of the frames of our video will be created in our Stable Diffusion folder, Outputs, Image to Image, Clip. This is going to take a while, so I'll be back when the render is finished. Ok, it's done. You can see an image sequence in your Clips folder with exactly 260 frames, which means that 
each second frame has been skipped by the forum. Now I will use QuickTime again for creating a video out of the image sequence. But when you're on Windows, you can just import the image sequence into your video editing software. Then let's head over to our video editing software. In my case, that's Final Cut Pro, but you can use any software you like. Let's create a new project and import our output video into the project. Now, the last thing to do is reducing the speed of the video to 50% and let your video editing software interpolate the missing frames. And that's exactly why I just rendered half of the frames, because the interpolation makes the video much smoother and more consistent. You can try and skip even more frames at the stable diffusion render, depending on the kind of animation you're using and on the capabilities of your video editing software. Now let's export the final video and then take a look. I hope I could give you a quick overview on the whole process. The most important thing is that you play around with the settings until you're satisfied with what you see. There is no right or wrong and this tutorial was just meant to be a little guidance for you. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.